Have you seen artists using pan pastels and thought about trying them but were shocked when you saw the price? Are they worth it and why are they so expensive? I'm going to talk to you about the benefits of pan pastels and why they are actually very cost effective contrary to popular belief. I'm Kirsty Rebecca and I create drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow so that you can create realistic and professional artwork even if you're just starting out. Just a disclaimer, throughout this video it's going to sound like I'm a walking advertisement for pan pastel and it seems like I'm saying that pan pastels are way better than any other form of soft pastel and that you should only buy them. But in reality, I still use pastel sticks and pastel pencils in combination with pan pastels because they actually work beautifully together. But if you're just starting out with pastels and haven't purchased your supplies yet, I do highly recommend starting with a small set of pan pastels and a small set of pastel pencils rather than jumping straight to pastel sticks. And I'm going to explain why I believe that. Okay, so I know that pan pastels seem expensive, but they're actually less expensive than other artist quality light fast soft pastel options when you compare how much pastel is in each pan. There is much more pastel in a pan compared to pastel pencils and soft pastel sticks. According to the pan pastel website, there's actually 40% more soft pastel in a pan pastel than in an average soft pastel stick and it has four to five times more coverage. So yes, the price of a single pan is usually more expensive than the price of a good quality soft pastel stick or a pastel pencil, but they will honestly last you so much longer. I've had my set of pan pastels for about five years and I'm only just starting to run out of my first color now and I do quite a lot of work in pastels. The main reason why pan pastels are more cost effective and the reason why I recommend beginners buy a set of pan pastels is because you can actually blend and mix your colors just like paint. This means that you don't need hundreds of different colors to start with like you would if you invested in a soft pastel sticks. You can just buy the basic set of five colors, which comes with a primary red, blue, and yellow, as well as black and white. And you can mix any color that you need, just like paint. The way that pan pastels work is that there are 20 pure colors, which also have a tint and a shade and an extra dark shade of each pure color. So for example, if you take violet, you can actually make violet tint by adding some white to that pure color violet. You can also make violet shade by adding black and you can make violet extra dark shade by adding even more black. And if you go back a step and you're starting out with that five basic set of colors, you can actually mix your pure colors with those five colors as well. For example, if you wanted to mix that violet, you would just mix your red and your blue together and then you can mix your tints and shades from there. So you can literally mix your colors just like paint. And that is something you can't do with soft pastel sticks and that's why people usually have hundreds of pastel sticks which is why it is more expensive than buying a set of pan pastels and some people do argue that you can mix soft pastel sticks by layering them on the paper but the problem with that is that if you want to add any sort of pastel pencils or colored pencils or details or multiple layers on top of that when you start layering layers and layers of pastel sticks onto some paper you are most likely going to fill up that tooth of the paper very quickly and that's going to stop you from adding multiple layers or any sort of detail. There are a few different ways that you can mix your colors and I usually just pick up a few different colors that I think I'm going to need from different pans and then I apply them straight to my artwork where it will mix in on the paper with the tool. But you can also make it more precise by mixing your colors on a separate piece of paper and I tend to use printer paper for this. So you can see in this example, I'm trying to mix more accurate kind of skin tones so that I can see exactly what color I'm mixing before I apply it to my paper. So once you've mixed the color that you need on your printer paper to the side, you can just go and lift that color off of that paper and apply it to your drawing paper. The coverage of pan pastels is also a huge benefit. If you apply a swatch from a pastel stick, and a swatch from a pan pastel to a more textured paper, you can really see that the pan pastel looks so much smoother and it fills in the little white gaps in the paper. 
And part of that reason is because of the tools that you apply them with. If you purchase a set of pan pastels, they come with soft tools, and that's S-O-F-F-T, that's the brand name. They're a unique applicator sponge that comes in different sizes for smaller or larger areas, which means you can create some pretty fine details with the edges of some of the tools, but you can also fill in large areas quite quickly. Another great benefit to pan pastels is that they have a unique packaging and application of the pastel, which means that they are far less messy on your hands and artwork and desk, basically, than traditional soft pastels. When you apply the pastel, you're actually applying a small amount of even coverage, and the tools actually push that pastel into the paper a little bit, which helps the pastel grip onto the paper, especially if you're using a sanded paper or pastel mat. So there is way less excess dust in the air in comparison to traditional soft pastels. The soft tools also allow you to control how much pastel you lay down. This means that you can avoid filling up the tooth of the paper too quickly. And if you're not sure what the tooth of the paper means, it's basically every paper that you work on has these little grooves, which we refer to as the tooth. They're kind of like little hills and valleys. So when you come across with your pastel, it catches on the top of the hills and then deposits into the valleys. Once your valleys are filled up, they become level with the hills and it creates a slick kind of surface where you can't add any more pastel on top because there's nothing for it to grip onto anymore. So when you're working with pan pastels, you can actually apply a small amount if you want to use it as an underpainting. So that way you don't fill up the tooth very much and you can add those colored pencils or pastel pencils or whatever you're using on top. Or you can continue to build up your layers for smooth and saturated backgrounds. Although a lot of people use pan pastels for their underpaintings and backgrounds, you can actually use the soft sponges, which come in a large variety of sizes, to create a more expressive piece entirely with pan pastel. Pan pastels are a unique concept, and I had a lot of questions when I first started using them. But their website also has some very helpful tools like this digital brochure, which actually goes through everything you need to know and it has some really useful tips in there. So I'll leave that in the description for you. Another benefit of pan pastels is that they are mixed media friendly. Not only can you use them with your soft pastel sticks and pastel pencils, but you can also use them with other mediums like colored pencil, acrylics, acrylic grounds, inks, watercolor, encaustic, polymer clay, and markers. You can also erase pan pastels quite easily if you're working on a smoother paper as well, so that's great for all sorts of different techniques. You can also use them for wet wash techniques where you can use rubbing alcohol and water on your painting. As you can tell, I fell in love with pan pastels as soon as I started using them, and I recommend them to everyone because of the benefits I've mentioned in this video. I even collaborated with Pan Pastels recently to come up with my own set of 20 colours called the General Realism with Kirsty Rebecca. I will leave a link to the set of 5 basic colours, as well as my own set of 20 colours in the description below so you can find out a little bit more about them. But if you wanted to see how you can create an entire project in real time with step-by-step -step instructions answering all of your frequently asked questions, then click on the free full-length tutorial in the top corner and I'll see you over there.